All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Guys Who Are Rude to Women They Sleep With Aren't Jerks, They're Sexist. And guys, this article is written by a woman who's in her late 20s, a millennial, and basically this, this story goes that she was in a long-term relationship since college, six years, she says, and then she gets out of it, goes back to the dating scene, and lo and behold, she eventually goes out with a guy, they hook up, and guess what? He doesn't call her the next day or at all. And basically, this whole article is about her basically, if you read between the lines, she's mad because this guy didn't call her back, and she doesn't like how that is and how that happens sometimes. And so now she, instead of just saying that guys that do that are jerks, she wants to label them as sexist. And it goes in this whole thing about trying to establish that mindset in women that guys that do that are jerks they are actually being sexist towards us, which is a bunch of crap. And I'm doing this, guys, one, because this is obviously entertaining, and two, because this is the mindset. This People like her are the ones that they start things like this, and the next thing you know, we have what we have today, where all of a sudden people start actually think buy into these harebrained ideas, okay? But here's the reality. If you're dating and you hook up with guys, some guys aren't going to call you back the next day. End of story, okay? And guess what? Women do it too, okay? Because contrary to what a lot of people like her want you to believe, women like sex just as much as guys. And they may hook up with a dude, never call the next day, and that's that. And by the way, putting it on a different level, how many women go out on a date with a guy and have no problem having him spend sometimes a couple hundred dollars or more at a fancy restaurant and drinks and all that, and she never calls him the next day, or he calls her and she totally ghosts him, okay? So, you know, there's there could be there's wrongdoing on both parts here, but just to label that sexist, come on here, it's ridiculous. But I'm going to go to this article, you're going to see what I'm talking about, and we'll go from there. So it starts off, after six years of the security, support, and occasional suffocation that comes with a long-term monogamous relationship, I recently became single for the first time as an adult out of college. I knew dating again would be a strange and possibly emotional, emotionally difficult experience after so long with one person. But what I didn't expect, and what nobody warned me about, was the sexism. Uh-oh. With feminism almost universally embraced, oh yeah, I had long assumed that anyone I'd be interested in hanging out with would know that the traditional heterosexual dating rules are ridiculous. And why play and why play some outdated game when you've absolutely no intention of starting a serious relationship? Okay, so this is obviously an attack towards guys. Well, how about uh, all the women out there that will go out and have a guy spend a ton of money on them, not just once, but sometimes multiple times, and have no interest in the guy? I mean, honestly, they, they went out truly because they didn't want to be home alone. Oh, and I just want to get out and they know uh, this guy likes them and will spend a bunch of money on them not just once but twice sometimes three times until the guy finally realizes this ain't going anywhere how about that but I'm not seeing any articles about that I'm not seeing any owning up to those things she says the first time I met someone I was interested in post breakup none of those rules were relevant we had sex texted, and hung out without counting the hours between messages or playing hard to get. The second time, however, I was not so lucky. In a scenario familiar to millions of people, yet honestly surprising to me, I had sex with a guy, and she says we'll call him Dan, and never heard from him again. I didn't know him well and certainly wasn't emotionally invested, but the inter interaction still rankled me. We got on incredibly well, and for the non and nonchalance endemic to casual hookups, sex is an unavoidably intimate experience. The radio silence post-coitus seems strangely cold. So, this is I'm going to guess this is probably the first time this happened to her, and she's probably used to guys chasing after her and wanting her, but this time, the guy obviously just, it was pump and dump, that was it, and she's pissed about it. And now she's got to write a whole fucking article about it and label that as sexism. Just say not 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 just not accepting that. Just hey, it happens. End of story. Don't take it personally. You know, there's people like that, and again, women do that too. Now we get this whole article, and now you're going to see where this is going to go as I go on through the story here. 
The shift in his behavior was particularly striking because it runs so counter to most conventional adult behavior. In general, it's pretty easy to read relationships. I can tell when a connection over drinks turns into a colleague, into a friend, or when you're putting in time with a family acquaintance and you just don't gel. Even when the spark's not totally there, polite society dictates a certain common courtesy. Hence the friendliness that oils our interactions with fitness instructors, former co-workers, friends of friends, and hairdressers. So why not people we sleep with? She's really butthurt, guys. But while friends were quick to call Dan a jerk, it's not fair to wave off this behavior as straightforward rudeness. He didn't seem particularly like a jerk and almost certainly doesn't think of himself as one. Ultimately, it seems women whom you've had sex with are the only category of people straight men aren't expected to treat cordially. This deep-seated sexism comes alongside various other problematic assumptions. That sex is something women give to men. That women always want relationships. That talking about emotions is connected in connection to sex is crazy. That still seems to permeate heterosexual sexual relations. And that left me a hardcore feminist in 2016 feeling like a cow that had given away the milk for free. So, okay. She labels herself as a feminist. Anybody surprised here? Not, not just that, but also hardcore. But obviously, she had no problem sleeping with the guy. Okay? I don't know how long she waited to sleep with him, but she had no problem sleeping with him. And guess what? I'm sure she enjoyed it. I'm sure she enjoyed what led up to it. I'm sure she enjoyed the process. I'm sure she felt good afterwards. Only after he obviously ghosted her and, she never, and, and there was radio silence that now she's mad. But before then, everything was cool. And what's interesting is even though she labels herself as that, you know, those ideas, those those values that of that movement has, that's all in here. But attraction is in here, in the heart, and definitely down there, down south. And it goes to show she's just like everybody else, but at the end of the day, women like her go on to what they he- have in here, what they've allowed themselves to be brainwashed, and so on. And now we get this article to read and make fun of. She goes on, Perhaps it was naive of me to assume dating culture had sorted out its sexist hang-ups while I was blindly enmeshed in my own monogamous relationship. She's really knocking the relationship she was in for six years. So she, she's not happy that she was in a uh, monogamous relationship for six years, knocking it. She's not happy about how things are in the dating scene right now. You can't make her happy. But does that sound familiar to any of you guys right now about you know the old joke, you can't make women happy? Don't blame me. I know I'm going to get some 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 woman on here or somebody's going to insult me for saying the obvious, but it's the truth. Goes on. Kathleen Bogle, a sociology professor at LaSalle University who has written the about hookup culture confirms that despite progress on some feminist issues, misogynistic sexual standards remain the norm. Tender may have revolutionized how people how we people meet, but those threads of sexism have stubbornly remained the same. This refusal to move past patriarchal stereotypes, she's certainly getting all the buzzwords in here, guys. Are you noticing this? Good lord. And this is just the beginning. It's surprising given young people's progressive attitudes on other social issues, like LGBT rights. It's like day and night, the conversation it would have been 20 years ago versus now when it comes to gay rights, Bogle says. But with this conversation on dating, hookup culture, and sexual behavior, you see that that mentality of calling someone a slut, calling someone a hoe. Indeed, Dating still reflects some attitudes from when the practice first began in the early 1900s. Maura Weigel, a PhD candidate in comparative literature at Yale University, has written a book on the history of dating. PhD in comparative literature at Yale University has written a book on history of dating. Someone with that kind of um, area of expertise, I don't see exactly being an expert in the dating field. They don't, women like that don't strike me as very sexy. I'm picturing kind of the butt-ugly librarian. I could be wrong here, but... And so she's going to write a book on the history of dating and have her two cents. That should be interesting. 
When it first began, she says, dating was a way for working class women of limited means to find husbands. Men had the wages to buy dinner and ultimately a lifetime of financial security. So dating became a way for women to attract male attention and gain access to wealth. Well, guess what? Not a whole lot has changed in that department. At a really deep level, even though I hope we've moved beyond this in some way, there's still the idea that dating is like work for women and recreation for men. Weigel says, Sex is a kind of work women do to get attention or affection, and men are the ones who have to, who had that to give. I have news for you, like I said it before. Women enjoy sex just as much as men. I don't know what where these people are getting this idea that it's it's work for them or or and all that. And in regards to uh, who's doing the real work, men are doing the real work here. Guys are the ones that are in the position to have to obviously most of the time spend the money and and do all that type of things. It's easier for women. Let's be honest here. So come on here. People often end up being bigger assholes than they have to because there's there's always this assumption that a woman wants more. Yes, they always do want more. What reality are these two, is this woman writing this article and the women that obviously have quotes of this, where are they living? Fucking La La Land? Yes, women always want more. It doesn't stop. And those women that are watching this, admit it, you know I'm right. People treat... People treat people they've had sex with much worse than they treat people they've had a coffee with. It makes no sense that you have to be rude, or so rude, but I think it does come out of these expectations, where it's like, oh, if you spoke to a woman after having sex, she would expect you to father her child. Well, no, it's more like a guy and a gal hook up, they date, they hook up, whatever, and let's be, we all know this, is that if a guy is too quick to reach out to her after sex... Or God forbid, say I had a great time or any any shit like that. Guess what? He will be perceived as being clingy, needy, likes her too much. And guess what's going to happen? She's going to lose interest. Or she'll become so sure of herself with him, knowing that this guy obviously really likes me, she will lose interest and probably back away. Or in some cases, oh shit, this guy's really clingy and needy. I need to get out of here. That's what's going to happen. That's why a lot of guys that have been around the block and understand that don't do that. They may call her later if they obviously like her, but they're not going to do it the next day or later that night or something like that because they know through life experience what happens when you do that. That's just how it is in this day and age. Lisa Wade, a sociology professor at Occidental College with a forthcoming book on college hookup culture, says that this mentality also drives women to become prematurely detached in their sexual relations. They know that men will latch on to any sign that they're being friendly as proof they're pathetic and want to be in a relationship, she adds. These women that she's quoting that are writing books and these so-called experts, I guarantee you they are definitely uh, members of the you-know-what group. Guaranteed. And I'm willing to bet you, if I, had a, if I was a betting man, they're not exactly hot. I could be wrong. As a culture... We've elected to celebrate the supposedly male perspective of detachment, says Wade, and to enhance it to an emotionally cold extreme. And so while casual sex is now standard, having any feelings or concerns about such sex is seen as weird, people are very embarrassed by emotion and by caring, says Weigel. Meanwhile, women who complain about how they've been treated or ask a sexual partner about their relationship are dismissed as crazy. Despite the term, the term's established connections to sexist stigma, Bogle says this idea is still strongly resonates among young people. Well, guess what? Like I said before, women like sex just as much as men. And there are plenty of women out there, and I know some, but trust me on this, they like having casual sex. They like having multiple partners, hooking up, and keeping it casual. End of story. It isn't just guys. So don't make it out to be like it's the guys are all the villains and that women aren't like this. Not at all. A lot of women I I know that are in their 40s and early 50s in particular that have been divorced, sometimes twice, have kids, some haven't had kids. They've been around the block. They never want to get married again, okay? They want to just have a good time, meet guys, have fun, hook up, keep it casual, and that's that because they realize it's that much easier. So it is not just guys, okay? She continues... As is often the case with sexism, contemporary attitudes towards sex aren't great for men either. Contrary to the stereotype deep down, plenty of men don't actually want a lot of meaningless sexual encounters. There are some guys that are 
more relationship guys. That is true. I have a, I have a good friend. He's married now, but I've known him for a long time, like 15 years, and he just wasn't that way. And he could get girls. It wasn't a problem. He was more of a relationship guy. Okay, There are guys like that. But by and large, guess what? A lot of guys, if they could, believe me, if they had the personality and they had the charm and charisma and, of course, the looks and the money, you can bet your ass, any, any, any one of those things, I bet you, you bet your ass, they're going to nail anything that moves that's above an eight or above. Guaranteed. So I don't want to hear this crap that it's bad for men and they don't want to do that. Come on here. There are exceptions, but by and large, let's be honest here. Listen to this. There's tremendous pressure on men to have sex when it's available. Just as women get slut-shamed, men get shamed in that direction, Bogle says, and to be unemotional in these relations. But in reality, men and women don't have such wildly different desires. Wade says she remembers one young man talking about how easy it was to get blowjobs. On the surface, they're very pleasurable, he told her, but it didn't feel good. Who the hell is this guy so I can slap him upside the head? We've only just begun to scratch the surface in terms of how these stereotypes hurt men. What a load of bullshit. For example, researchers recently found that erectile dysfunction in men under 40 is far more common than previously thought. Matt Hunter, who co-founded the Cambrio Project, is honestly t- to honestly talk about and improve sex lives, wrote about how this attitude towards sex contributed to his own erectile dysfunction issues. It didn't have much to do with enjoying the sex, creating pleasure, or loving another person. It was more about the conquest, the story for my bros, and a notch on the old bedpost, he wrote. Weigel also points out that Neil Strauss's, the author of The Game, and it says in uh, quotes, a parenthesis, this perfect de- death dance of heterosexual stereotypes had to go to therapy for sex addiction. Yeah, being a sociopath and pretending you have no feelings isn't good for long-term happiness, she adds. Ultimately, I think what's most surprising about sexism in dating is how reluctant we are to talk about it. The dating world is the last openly sexist area of society we've all expected to ignore. We may swap horror stories about the game and jerks, but we rarely acknowledge the misogynistic attitudes behind such behavior. What a load of shit. And even liberal, self-proclaimed feminist men can treat their, the women they sleep with coldly and not notice any incru- any issues. <clears throat> not sure if you're part of the problem? Here's an easy rule of thumb. Here we go. Treat your sexual partners in such a way that were you, for whatever reason, to end up working together, you wouldn't feel awkward or embarrassed. Well, you don't. You would never want to end up working with someone that you once hooked up with or anything like that. And by the way, you shouldn't be hooking up with anybody you do work with, how things are in this day and age. I've done plenty of videos and t- covered that subject before. In case any of you guys are new to this channel, don't hook up with, don't date, don't sleep with the people that you work with. That is a recipe for a disaster and how things are in this day and age post Me Too. In other words, just be nice. And if you do suddenly change your opinion about someone, act like a grown-up and be honest about it. And she says, I recently told a guy I've been on two dates with that I was getting more of a friendship vibe. It felt unusually frank for the New York dating scene app, dating scene, but he appreciated the honesty, and I was glad I had resisted the urge to ghost him. Continues, progress in the dating world can be potentially uh, particularly slow, says Bogle, but there's no, cl- listen to this part, guys, this is no joke, but there's no clear legislation to campaign for or authoritative body to go with the complaints. Wegel agrees, noting that the notion of widespread pervasive sexism can be upsetting. I'm going to read that part again. Progress in the dating world can be particularly slow, says Bogle. This is one of the authors of one of those books because there's no clear legislation to campaign for or authoritative body to go with the complaints. So we need to have an authoritative body to determine how the the do's and don'ts and how you're supposed to date and all the rules that apply there. That's a scary thought. But it's women like this or people like this that have these ideas. They get butthurt, just like this woman here. She writes this article and she starts to uh, get uh, get things rolling towards something like that. That's how a lot of these harebrained ideas become kind of the norm. People like this. It's crazy. An authoritative body with regards to dating and, and all that. Give me a fucking break. 
Another quote, people don't want to think about their private lives in structural terms because it feels unfixable, she says. It's very discouraging to think you might find find frustrating in your private romantic life might be the result of huge economic and social forces that are beyond your individual control. Control. By the way, typically people like this, women like this, are control freaks. I've known women like this. They are absolute control nut jobs. Everyone just wants to know what their personality, what they personally can do, which is really understandable. But feminism is a political movement. It's not something one person can do. Article finishes up saying, Still, individual changes in behavior are a good start. Don't be a jerk. Don't ghost. And don't consider the people you have sex with any less worthy of your time and energy than people you interact with in public. We're all slightly vulnerable during sex. There's no need to pretend to be emotionally dead in the morning after. Okay. So, like I said, she is really pissed off about getting uh, ghosted. She's pissed. She's butthurt as hell. And, and so much so that she had to write a whole article about it. And consult a bunch of women that wrote, wrote books that no doubt are butthurt about it too or probably haven't seen a whole lot of dicks in their lives and they got to write write articles and stuff like that and this is what we get but this is ridiculous okay it's gonna happen accept it don't take it personally i'm sure it was probably the first time it ever happened to her i don't know what she looks like maybe she's good looking who the hell knows but it's probably the first time it happened to her she's so mad and got so riled up she probably just had to sit down on her computer and type this up be the be the Carrie Bradshaw, whatever the hell, whatever her name is from that show, Sex in the City, and here we go. So, and yes, guys, I know that show, but anyhow, um, thought it was interesting article to go over and definitely entertaining. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and know what you think about this, and be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.